They were born in 1936 out in the country in the mountains of Kerry. We were born in the inner city in Dublin and we moved out to Body Fairman. I was born in Elimer, County Galway. My mum was uh, born in the Mamturk Mountains of Connemara. Dad was from Ballinalee, County Longford. I was born in County Kevin. I come from Saban, County Tyrone, Northern Ireland. It was a very small place. We had a house, kind of a little bungalow. We had the land at the back. We had to keep sheep and cattle and that. We were from Roscommon. My dad's a farmer, as was my mum. I could milk any cow, <laughs> feed the pigs, whatever anybody wanted. We had land, a bit of land, and all the work had to be done by hand. Well, it was very hard because I never see a pair of shoes until I was about ten. Primary school was just over three miles, so we walked there every morning, winter and summer. We had a vicious old devil of a teacher. You get the strap, but worse still, you get the duster or something else thrown at you and you get it around the head, around the ears. But he was a good teacher. As a child, I always wanted to be a nurse. We used to practice when I was a kid with my brothers, dressing up as a nurse. Really poverty. Nobody nobody had no money, nobody. You might get one day on the docks, you might not get nothing in all the way. There was no work and bad conditions sort of thing. There was eight of us and I was the eldest. There was no work there, right? That's why I came over here. That time people would be coming back from England and they all had money and nice clothes over there and be looking at them. And if you had a watch, oh my God. We had a bit of a land in Ireland and things, them times, wasn't so good. So my parents decided that we'd sell up and come to England. I was 15 when I come to England. I had to say, I was 16 to get a job here. I was a 16 then. I was old enough to head to England, 1955. My parents never knew I'd come to England because I was only about 14 and a half, 15 at the time. I just run away from home. So I came to England. My father didn't want me to come. I came across on the boat and the Princess Maud and the seas were rough. It took us 13 hours. I was just sick. And everybody was sick. We come across on the B&I. That was the ship that left from the North Wall in Dublin. Crowded, people laying everywhere. It was rocking like the devil. Plus a couple of hundred cattle and the hold. I landed in Liverpool. I missed my train. There was a graveyard there, and I, I stayed the night, sitting on the seat, dark as ink. Eventually I got to England, to Birmingham. A metal bloke used to work on the railway, a boil man. He took me to the railway, Monument Lane Station. I spent some time on the railway. I met an Irishman, and he was working on the railway, and he says, if you come up with me in the morning, I'll give you a job. So that's the way I went. I was res responsible for the safety. I had to make sure everybody heard me whistle and all that. When there be a train approaching, you know. I'd railway my blood, I think. I went to work at uh, New Street Station. They were demolishing part of it, then rebuilding the new part. And uh, I was just a labour of myself. We made a new railway. New fences, concrete sleepers. The railway was nearly all Jamaicans and Irish because it was hard work, shovels and pickaxes and all that sort of thing. The tracks were left to fall to pieces during the war. You know, you couldn't bring them back. There was no weed killing, no weed pulled, and they turned into soil, rails breaking and everything. My mother encouraged me in going into nursing. She wanted to do it herself, but the war intervened. The hospitals in England, a lot of the weekly papers you picked up, there's always an advert for nurses. Next thing I was here in Martin. <laughs> Training was done at the hospitals in them days, and no university in those days. So come home, then you had to study. As training, you spend a lot of time you sleuth, cleaning up all the bedpans, all those utensils that they had. At night, we had to sit in the middle of the ward. You didn't sit in the office. 
once a month. You had to go into the matron. She'd inspect your uniform, your shoes, your hair. She would untidy, even a lecture. Army Women's Hospital, Tasha the QE was all super, super new. We were the first people to go in there. Went down one morning to um, go on to delivery suite and there was no delivery bed. Some beggar had come in the night and stole it. I would look back and say my first days taught me how to talk to people of all colours and creeds. I liked my refresh, so I stayed. So I did 40 odd years in my refresh. Some of the trenches we dug were six foot wide and six foot deep. There were a hundred men there, mostly Irish. The gang of man always had a shovel with him, walking up and down the trench next year, like a guard. He was the man that done the beating. You couldn't stand up while you were working or anything. And those who did, they were just dragged out of the trench with their hair and sacked. But forced to do that work. There's only thing they could do. Dig, dig, dig. They were no good for anything else. They weren't trained for anything else. The job sheets, when they'd be telling a job, there'd be a little green sign and a little black sign and they'd be circled, which meant no warish or no colours they deploy. Now, I didn't get the same rate as the other people that worked with me because Irish people didn't get it then. It's only 12 pound a week wages, you know, for that job. We done that. Worked on the post office tower and he used to earn 14 pounds a week. I made a lot of money on the buses. I used to do a lot of overtime. I couldn't live on the money. It was only four pound eight shillings a week and the digs was two pound 50. Some of them slept rough, couldn't afford to. Hey, Deeks, they'd be straight into the pub. And we'd have to pick him up at the pub in the morning sometimes. The Mermaid, the Black Horse, the Shakespeare, and the Jews' Arms. And then you had the Antelope, the Spark Hill. You got a room, and you paid £1.50. Then you got full board and lodgings, and that was about £3.50 a week. Coming to Birmingham was very strange, because some of them, they said, put notice on the door. No Irish, no blacks. We never had a lot of money because we had to pay the landlady 30 shillings a week. I had uh, 33 shillings left then. She used to keep the, the sugar and the milk and the tea in a, a locked up safe at night time. Nobody could get at it. You wouldn't mind, but she was Irish as well. The lodgings were so bad. You know, little rooms and things. And they were cold and damp and all that sort of thing. I never had to do it, but there would be hot bedding. You know, there'd be people on different ships having to come home and going to some other body's beds and all that. When Spaghetti Junction was being built, accommodation was really uh, in short to supply. And we actually had 10 construction workers, but we only had five beds. They were quite happy. Day workers would get up and have their breakfast and go off to work and the night workers would come home and have their breakfast and get into the beds that the day workers had just left. We got a, a tunnel to build from one side of New Street to the other side to pick up the main sewer. And that was in the daytime, and at night then I used to go out to Hampton Airport, clearing the snow off the runway. I used to work about 18 hours a day. We're doing roads and sewers, so you'd be concreting today and tomorrow you'd be slab land or tarmacken. Even diverted sewers. And if you cut your hand, they told us, any cut, you'll have to go down to the hospital, the general hospital, because you'll get poisoned or something. You weren't supplied with any equipment at all. You had to provide your own it's up to yourself whether you're God or whether you worked without it or not. You dust anywhere, you wouldn't have a mask on you or nothing. Then when you start painting, then you just put Vaseline on your face. And then at the end of the year, you just wiped the Vaseline off. <laughs> In 66, I was at Wimpy's and we were building a 20-storey block of flats. In Sun Street, we were doing three or four of those up around Lee Bank. Aston Cross. Concrete the roads, nearly all the roads in Birmingham. We've done High Street Smithwick, we've done High Street Harbour, we've done the Ring Road in town there. 
From the Irish Centre up into the Bullring, we done that, and we demolished the old Bullring, dug it all out. And uh, we done Newton Road, and we done Camp Hill there. In about 1968, 69, I was a, a block foreman by then. I could take the whole block on from the very foundation up to the top, over all the block. The ground workers, the chippies, and the concrete workers. And we'd build a house a day, like a twin house, ten hours a week. I worked in uh, Chalambley Wood or Castle Vale. Met this bloke. He said, there's a big job, Spaghetti Junction. The next day I got on the bus and went out to, to Spaghetti Junction. It was all just grassland like more or less at that time. He said, can you drive a machine? I said, no. He called this bloke over. He says, here, can you give Frank a go on this? And he showed me how to do it. And I drove up and down the side. And that was the tuition. And I came to Birmingham. I came to Spaghetti Junction first. I worked on the steel at that time, you know what I mean? Reinforced steel. No, he fixed it all together, you know what I mean? Make columns out of it. Concrete it then. And I was up a hundred foot, and it was of a Saturday evening. Somebody was praying for me. I nearly come down. But one man took a step back and fell to his death. But I walked off one day down the canal, down to Spaghetti Junction. There was a guy down there in that canal, drowned in the sludge. Couldn't reach him in time. Time it pumped out, he was dead. They don't give credit to the guys who actually done the work. I met my husband at the Shamrock. St. Francis, St. Teresa's, the Irish Centre and down, and the Gary Owen Club went one earlier on. That was the social life, mostly. That's where everybody met. We met at St. Anne's, Marion St. Anne's. With the horse trees, the shamrock. I was crazy mad for dancing. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock, rock and roll. We had St. Teresa's, which was a very good Irish club, then to St. Francis. Well, the first thing I went and <laughs> done was, went to St. Catherine's, because my favorite pastime was dancing. Kayleigh, you name it, the lot. And then I went there about four or five weeks, maybe six, and I met my husband. My early years in Birmingham then was spent around various jobs, like I worked in Lucas's, I worked in the factories of tube bending, auto machines. We always put £1.50, which was a lot of money then, in an envelope and sent it, sent it to our parents. Then I went on then to work in the IMI, which there was a lot of Irish people there. I loved it there. And um, I used to finish there at um, half past five. And then I used to run up Whitten Road all the way to Trinity Road. There was a petrol garage. I worked in there from six o'clock till nine, but that was my money sent home. I took us to the food office in Broad Street for our ration books and our ID cards. Then after that, they took us onto the BSA in Armory Road. And from there, then they took us to our digs on Ladypool Road. They trained us to be in the Cecilin Welder. I thought it would, I'd never even seen in the Cecilin lab. I don't mind anything else. So I like to show the out to light, it then put the oxygen thing on. And, and then I used to send 10 shillings a week home to my mother. If it wasn't for these people leaving Ireland and send the money home, Ireland would have collapsed many, many years ago. A lot of us Irish men moved from job to job because it was more money. It wasn't the conditions, because conditions at that time was no different with the one firm that you went before that or the firm you were going to go to. When I asked me this John Healy what I'd done for a living, I told him I was on the building and I was getting about 10 quid a week. I asked him what he'd done. He says, I am a bus driver. I said, what's the wages like? He said, around 20 quid a week. I said, could I get a job there? He says, uh, of course you can. I've done 27 years, and some time later, I got a very nice letter from management congratulating me. I'll tell you something, the best job in England. I travelled quite a bit, as far away as San Francisco but I always come back to Birmingham. 
When you look back and at uh, some of the people I met here in Birmingham from all nationalities, I'm proud to say that they were the happiest days of my life and then uh, nearly as good as the ones I enjoyed in my young days in Ireland. It's been a good city work-wise and all that and no problems whatsoever uh, and I hope it stays like that for the future for the next generation.